So as you increase the size of the force applied to that body, particle, whatever, uh, its acceleration will increase linearly. And uh, so F is proportional to the acceleration. And the constant is called its, you know, so F, F is proportional to acceleration. So, um, so the constant to make F equal something A, that constant is called its mass. So you can look on mass as a kind of um, inertial resistance to acceleration. So the bigger the mass, the more force you have to apply to accelerate that mass by a certain amount. So you get the famous formula from classical mechanics, F equals M, the mass, A. F equals M, A. A is acceleration. And the third law, if uh, two masses, one's pushing on the other, uh, that's the force, let's say, on the second mass. But that second mass will uh, exert a, uh, a reverse force back on the first uh, mass, M1. And so uh, for each force, there's a, an equal and opposite, opposite direction, uh, force uh, F2. Okay, that's uh, Newton's third law. Anyway, so um, with the, an essential idea <coughs> in uh, classical mechanics, it's before quantum mechanics came around, is that if you know the state of a system and you know the laws of dynamics, you know, those three laws uh, of, from Newton, then you can predict, you can calculate using these uh, laws the future state or the past state. Uh, so, so long as you know the, the state at uh, a given time, you know, T1, let's say, and you know the laws of dynamics, uh, that you can then predict uh, predict or postdict, you go forward in time or backward in time, and predict or postdict the state at some other time, T2. T2 might be in the future, might be in the past. So in that sense, classical mechanics is determinist, right? You can determine, you can calculate with infinite accuracy the values, well, the state of, of that system, right? Now with quantum mechanics, uh, that's no longer true. Uh, what, what comes into quantum mechanics now is um, an indeterminism, uh, uh, a kind of statistical way of thinking. Instead of uh, knowing exactly what you know what the state is, or trying to predict what the state will be exactly, you you can't do that anymore. You have to uh, you have to start thinking statistically. Your probabilities. Well, uh, the probability of it of the some future state being such and such is, and you can calculate it. And uh, quantum mechanics allows you to calculate probabilities of something happening or probability of a certain uh, measurement result uh, being this value or that value. Or so uh, the old Newtonian classical uh, concept of determinism, you're know, predicting with uh, exactitude, that, uh, that idea goes out the window. Right? That's uh, a major change in uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why that's the case is uh, Heisenberg, that's Werner, a German uh, physicist. Uh, he was a young man. He's the father of modern quantum mechanics. I think he was 23, something it's an incredibly young age. Uh, a genius, obviously, a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, so he was a grad student, postdoc, not quite sure, um, with uh, Niels Bohr, a famous uh, Danish theoretical physicist, contemporary of Einstein, uh, based in Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, and uh, Bohr was very interested in the philosophical foundations of quantum mechanics. He, he was profoundly disturbed by uh, the implications, the philosophical implications of quantum mechanics because it was so revolutionizing uh, physicists' uh, view of the world, you know, the way they interpreted the world. Anyway, so uh, Bohr invited Heisenberg to, to stay with him for a while at uh, Copenhagen, at, at Bohr's famous uh, Institute of uh, Theoretical Physics, now, now simply called the Bohr Institute. And uh, Heisenberg was Bohr's favorite um, colleague, can't really call him a pupil, and Bohr went off on a skiing holiday and uh, left Heisenberg at Copenhagen 
and uh, Heisenberg was thinking about uh, how how can you measure a quantum particle you know, that obeys quantum mechanics at uh, at you know these tiny scales? How 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 can you, for example, trace out the path, the trajectory of a quantum particle? Uh, you know, by observation, you know, at time t1 it's here, and then at time t2 it's there, and then at time t3 it's here, and so on. And you just do all these series of time uh, measurements at different times, and you get the traje trajectory, the, the path traced out by uh, a moving quantum particle. And I'll be talking, uh, talking about this uh, in greater depth and uh, detail in the next uh, session. But I'll just give you a taste of here. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that you you cannot measure the position and the momentum of a particle, a quantum particle, uh, with infinite accuracy for both. It's it's in fact it's a kind of zero sum game. It's a trade off. If you measure the position of that uh, quantum particle very accurately, uh, you'll pay a price, and that is you will lose the exactitude of the information about its momentum. So it's one or the other, right? You, you can't have both. And the reason for that is, is that the very tools that you're using to perform the measurement are themselves quantum systems. And quantum systems are discrete. They have, uh, they come in discrete uh, little energy packets and so forth. So, um, and there's a, that, that, that has consequences. It means that you cannot measure both position and momentum with infinite accuracy. So uh, yeah, there's a numerical relation um, called the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg, usually often abbreviated to HUP, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Okay? So uh, that's, you, ha you have to give up the idea of uh, knowing where a particle is at the same time knowing uh, what its momentum is. So the very notion, the very concept of a trajectory, like a path, uh, that, that becomes philosophical, metaphysical, maybe uh, unknowable. So uh, maybe at this point might be a good, com uh, good time to bring in uh, you, you can almost divide quantum mechanics into two very broad categories. One is the uh, the formalism, like the mathematical models that you're using, the mathematics, the tools that you use to perform calculations and probability calculations, that, that kind of thing. So the formalism, the rules, uh, the math tools and so forth, that, that's one thing. And the other second broad category is, uh, you could say, interpretation. In other words, you're looking at all this formalism, all these rules and, and so forth, and, and we'll be doing a, you know, a lot of uh, formalism at, at great depth. Uh, you will just we'll go up to, uh, gosh, PhD 2 level, lot, lots of formalism. But, but that, that's on, let's say on your left hand, with your right hand, you then, if you're curious, and especially if you have a philosophical turn of mind, and uh, that's, you know, that's certainly one of my strong interests, as I'm about to explain. Um, you may be curious to know, what does all this formalism mean? All these symbols, what do they mean? What's the connection between the mathematics and the physics? What the, the, These symbols in the mathematics that you're manipulating with the formalism, how do they translate into uh, physical intuitive, intuitive concepts that you can imagine. Well, that's the problem, you see, because the phenomena occurring at uh, quantum levels are so weird, especially you know, entanglement and various other things, are so weird that you cannot get uh, an intellectual handle, you know, a human brain level handle, hooks, intellectual hooks, on these concepts because they are so strange, right? So, uh, well, in my own case, uh, when I was learning quantum mechanics for the first time as an undergrad in uh, Melbourne, Australia, way back in, uh, God, when was that? Mid-60s, yeah, because I'm old. Uh, I, I felt 
very frustrated. Uh, I, I really felt quite antsy because I felt the professors were not teaching me at all the interpretation. They would just give me the formalism and uh, just didn't care about you know what all this stuff meant. And so uh, I was absolutely fascinated by by these concepts. So I decided uh, you know I'd, I would be uh, I would become a theoretical physicist and try to figure out this stuff. And one of my heroes at the time, uh, early my early twenties, was a guy called uh, who was very much alive at the time. He's since dead now. I think he died in the nineties. Uh, he and he became my professor. A uh, famous name, David Bohm, B-O-H-M. If uh, if you're a physicist at all, you very pro uh, quantum quantum mechanic. Quantum mechanic. If if you're a quantum mechanic, uh, you've uh, almost certainly heard of that name. Anyway, he was my uh, supervising uh, professor as when I was a grad student in London, and uh, I was fascinated by the whole question of uh, interpreting. Quantum mechanics. What does it all mean? And, and is there a possibility, maybe, for a sub, you know, underneath a lower level, level still, of uh, quantum mechanics? Now, uh, today, uh, that's what 40 years, 40 years later, there is still no sub quantum mechanics, uh, and a lot of people think uh, the whole notion is ridiculous, uh, can't can't exist. So, and I'll I'll be talking about you know, this throughout the, this course and the next course and, and so on. Anyway, uh, so I was a grad student with David Bohm for a couple of years until I realized that uh, the chances of me getting a job, you know, a professorship in uh, theoretical physics were virtually zero because uh, the, the baby boomers, and I was one of them, uh, we, had, we had already entered the universities by that stage and uh, all the jobs that were created in the early 60s to teach uh, these huge numbers of baby boomers getting into university as students, uh, those jobs had been pretty well filled and uh, filled by young, young, mostly young men because theoretical physics, a male profession, and uh, just no vacancies. It was just, it was just hopeless. So I sort of drifted off eventually into artificial intelligence and then late, much later artificial brains, which was my specialty for a long time. Anyway, uh, I still have this fascination for interpreting uh, quantum mechanics. Now, uh, you can 